Hi, and welcome to High School Physics Explained, and today I'd like to talk about optics. Now, you all already know, probably, that a magnifying glass can actually magnify objects. But did you know it also is able to produce real images? And today I want to demonstrate and show you how a magnifying glass, or more specifically, a lens such as the ones here, are able to produce a real image. And that is instrumental in understanding, for example, how telescopes work, how microscopes work, and how your own eyes work. So what we have here is my iPad. It's going to be the source of my light and my image. I have two lenses over here, and these lenses are going to produce an image on the screen. And we call this a real image because the image is able to be projected on something else. So I'm going to move my iPad like so, so that it faces the screen. You can do this yourself at home with a magnifying glass. And then you're going to use a lens. In this case, you'll notice I have two types of lenses here. I have a fairly thin lens and a fairly thick lens. And um, at the moment, I'm going to produce a thin lens and I'm going to project an image onto this screen over here. And hopefully, if I move this back far enough, you'll be able to see that. But I'll need to turn the lights down so that you can actually see it much better. So here you can see the magnifying glass and my screen. And here I have a piece of card. And as I move the card backwards and forwards, you can see I'm starting to form a real image over here. And if you look very carefully, that real image is inverted. Now, the size of this real image is affected by a number of factors. It's affected by, of course, the distance of the screen, but also the lens. So I'm going to swap the lens around. Now, in this case, this lens is fatter, and I'm going to have to move it much, much closer to get the image that I want. So a bit of adjusting going on like so. And there, roughly, it is in focus. But again, it's inverted. Now, why is it so? Let me explain. Well, in order to help us understand why an image, a real image, forms behind a lens, I'm going to use an animation here from the University of Colorado FET site. And it's well worth playing around with this yourself. And I'll put the link in the description section of the video. But what we have here, of course, is, is a converging lens. And we have here two focal points, and those points represent what light will do when it runs parallel to the lens, it will come and to a particular focus. So that's what the focal points are. And over here, I have the image of a pencil, and I'm going to show you how an image is formed on the other side. So the first thing you need to understand is that light is, of course, coming off in all many directions. So as you can see, light is streaming out in all directions. So if you were to look up here, you would see the light coming from the pencil over here and so forth. So in other words, you put your eye anywhere along this path, then you would obviously see the pencil. However, as light passes through the lens, you can see that the light converges to a particular point. Now, what is the significance of that? Well. If the light from the pencil from three different sources in this particular diagram converges at that point, then the pencil tip actually appears here. And so you can see that would be the formation of a pencil right at this point. Now, of course, I'm only using the representative of this particular point here. And in fact, if I have other points, you can see that here, the light from the center of the pencil also converges and comes to a point over here that sits a little higher than the point over here. If I were to move this particular point over here, you can see then I would get different effects. You can see I would eventually get the whole pencil in view because the light is converging to a point and all these points are converging at a common point and hence that's what you would see. And that's where you would get a sharp image. Now, if I were to place my eye at this point, 
I would actually see the image there as well. But I can place a piece of paper there as I've demonstrated already. Now, let's play around with that a little bit more and see how the effect of distance and the curvature and the refractive index of the glass can affect the actual image of the pencil. Now, in this case, as you can see, we have lots of light rays, but in order to help us understand what is happening with the image, we can choose up here, marginal rays or principal rays. And I'm gonna choose marginal rays, and the marginal rays tell, basically takes three samples, if one for a better phrase, of light, uh, where one light ray passes through the top of the lens, one light ray passes through the bottom of the lens, and then we have a light ray that passes directly through the middle of the lens. And in this case, this light actually uh, does refract, but actually refracts small, but this looks practically straight. But over here, the refraction over here causes it to bend quite sharply. Now clearly there's more light rays, but clearly we're only interested in the light rays that are passing through the lens and not through the, the space up here. And because we place our object in this case on the center line, we know that the inverse of the R image will be on the center line. So first of all, I want you to realize is that the image is inverted simply because of the way that the light bends through the actual lens. So that's the first thing. Secondly, it's that the image is in this case of a different size. Now, if I were to move the object closer to the actual lens, you can see that the image increases and moves further away. So that's one important feature there. And therefore, as I move the object away, the image obviously gets smaller, but also moves progressively closer to the focal point. What you should know though, is that the image formation will only occur if my object stays beyond the focal point. So in this case, as, you, as I move closer, you can see the image gets so big it goes off the screen. But what happens is that, as you can see, as I move it closer to things, these two lines start to become more and more parallel. Now watch what happens when I actually move it past the focal point. You can see that the light beams now actually are parallel at the focal point, which is what the focal point is. Light beam coming this way would come to a focus, and clearly light going the other direction will follow the same path. But you can see as I go beyond that, the light rays actually diverge. And that's really important because that means in order to form a real image on the other side, the object that you want to look at must exist beyond the focal point. But clearly, if I move further and further away with the object, then this image will get closer and closer to the focal point. But like our other example before, I cannot move this object so far away that this image will appear in front of the focal point. It'll always be behind it. So that's clearly the thing that you need to understand, that the position of the object in relation to the lens will have an impact on the actual size and distance of the real image on the other side of the lens. Secondly, what we can change, of course, is the curvature. How much does this lens bend? Well, that clearly affects the refraction. And so you can see what that affects is the focal point. Again, the relationship between this object and the image for various distances remains the same, that as I move this further away, the object, the image gets smaller, but the curvature will affect by how much. So I can really make that a really strong curvature. You can see the image ends up being really small, but notice again, it is still sitting behind the focal point over here. And so me moving my object closer will get my object really large, but as soon as I go beyond my focal point, I lose any real image whatsoever. So that's the curvature. Clearly, if I were to change the refractive index, then the light's gonna bend more. So that, of course, will also affect the position of the focal points, and of course, how much this bends. So therefore, if I have a lens made out of glass, and then I have a lens that is made up of, let's say, a jelly or a, la a lens that's made out of quartz. I'm going to get different amounts of bending. And finally, we can look at the diameter. Now, if I move the diameter, that really looks at the size of it. Now, you can see in this case, 
it actually does not affect the image whatsoever. The image is still there, but the only thing it might affect is how bright the image is. Now, why is that? Well, of course, it's the amount of light that you're allowing to pass through the lens. So if your lens is really big, then more and more light will converge to a common point, and therefore the intensity of the image gets much larger. And that's really about light gathering, and it's one of the reasons why telescopes have large apertures, because you're collecting more light. And by collecting more light, you get more actual intensity of the image that is over here. There you have it. You, ha you can see how the distance of the object uh, affects the real image. You can see how the curvature of our lens affects the real image. You can see how the refractive index affects the real image. And really, diameter doesn't do much except affect the intensity of the real image. I hope that gives you a little bit of understanding in terms of qualitatively how a real image forms with a convergent lens. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.